We'll start by unboxing the integrated power station and giving you an overview of what you get with the system. The integrated power station includes the following. A diesel generator to supply power to the reactor 2 proportioner in addition to 8 or more kilowatts of power available for supporting auxiliary equipment. Heat exchangers remove heat from the engine coolant to preheat the material before reaching the reactor 2 proportioner which requires less power and less diesel fuel, saving you money. The heat exchangers come mounted on the integrated power station or can be installed remotely, typically in the conditioned space with the proportioner. The systems with compressed air include a mechanically driven rotary vane compressor, an air dryer and air control panel, capable of supplying clean dry air to the gun, agitator, and transfer pumps. The system is pallet mounted, making it easy to install or move around the job site. The system is designed to work with either Reactor 2 electric or select hydraulic proportioner models, offering design flexibility to the rig builder. Also included with the power station are chemical supply manifolds, CAN communication cable and splitter allows the power station to communicate with the Reactor 2 proportioner over CAN network. Integrated Power Station Operations Manual, non greco Component Manuals. You'll need to source some items to complete the electrical connections to meet your needs and local codes. Reference the Reactor 2 Installation Manual to determine what is needed. Also, a 12-volt battery is required for the engine. Details on selection of this battery are provided in the Operation Manual. A proportioner is not included with the Integrated Power Station. All Reactor 2 proportioning systems that are configurable to single phase, such as the E30, EXP2, H30, and HXP2, can be paired with the integrated power station. Available accessories include a fuel tank, fuel tank pallet extension, Reactor 2 pallet extension, and a heat exchanger relocation kit. First determine where the integrated power station, Reactor 2, and fuel tank will be located. Typically all of these items will be placed in a trailer or truck. Optional kits are available to mount these components to a shared pallet system. The system should be placed on a level surface with a non-porous diesel resistant surface. Locate where you want the reactor to in relation to the integrated power station. The maximum length per supply hose between the integrated power station heat exchangers and the Reactor 2 chemical supply manifolds is 20 feet or 6 meters. The fuel tank must be within 10 feet or 3 meters of the integrated power station. If longer fuel lines are required, an electric fuel or lift pump must be utilized to avoid damage to the engine. The integrated power station is shipped with the maximum length 10 feet diesel fuel lines, which can be trimmed to the desired length to accommodate custom layouts, including the use of the fuel tank pallet extension kit and fuel tank kit. Attach the line marked supply to port labeled supply. Attach the return line. The fuel tank must not be more than three vertical feet or one meter above or below the engine fuel filter inlet port. Bond the integrated power station pallet to the chassis of a trailer or truck using the system's single point ground location. Secure the 12 volt battery to the battery tray. Attach the positive cable to the positive terminal, but do not attach the negative cable at this time. Next, we'll install hoses from feed pumps to the inlet strainers, to the heat exchanger, and then back to the pump inlets. The system in this video has the heat exchanger attached to the unit. First, remove the fluid inlet strainer assemblies from the inlet of the pumps on the reactor 2. Then mount the chemical supply manifolds to the pump inlets on the reactor 2 to the fitting on the manifold labeled pump inlet. Do this for both the A and B pumps. Attach the fluid inlet strainer assemblies to the manifold port labeled strainer using the provided fittings. Reactor 2 Elite models use different fittings here to accommodate inlet sensors. See your integrated power station manual for details. 
The minimum diameter on supply hoses is 3 quarter inch ID. Connect component supply hoses between the manifold fitting labeled HX Supply and the heat exchanger A and B inlet ports. Do for both A and B sides. Connect component supply hoses between the heat exchanger outlet ports to the HX return fitting on the manifolds. Do for both A and B sides. Connect the air supply lines from the air control panel to the A and B transfer pumps, the spray gun, and agitator if used. The air connection marked agitator is not meant to be used for any other components. All electrical connections must be done by a qualified electrician and comply with all local codes and regulations. You will need to source some items to complete the electrical connections to meet your needs and local codes. They include a battery for the system and a circuit breaker, power cord, and strain relief matching the power cord size to connect your reactor 2 to the system. Remove the shroud from the reactor 2 heater blocks. Find the corresponding heater rods that share the heater block ports with the A and B side RTD. Disconnect all heater rod wire pairs except for the identified rods nearest the RTD for both A and B heaters. Install the twist on wire connectors onto each disconnected heater rod wire pair. Secure the wire pairs with the provided cable ties. Reinstall the protective shroud. Route the M12 CAN cable into the Reactor 2 enclosure through the rear grommet. Remove the M12 CAN connection from its Reactor 2 connector and connect it to the M12 CAN splitter. Connect the M12 CAN splitter to the Reactor 2 M12 CAN connector. Connect the M12 CAN splitter connection to the M12 CAN cable connection. Verify that the M12 CAN cable is connected to the load center CAN connector inside the integrated power station engine controls enclosure. You'll need to install a circuit breaker that meets the specs for your reactor too. You can also install breakers for auxiliary equipment if desired. Remove knockouts and install bulkhead strain reliefs for all power cords. Bulkhead strain reliefs are not provided with the system. Route and install a power cable from the integrated power station circuit breaker to the reactor too. The system generates 240 volts single phase. Refer to your Reactor 2 Proportioner Manual for wiring and jumper configuration. Ground the Reactor 2 to the circuit breaker panel through the power cable connection. Connect the remaining negative battery cable to the negative terminal on the battery. Check the level of diesel fuel. Running out of fuel during operation can cause voltage fluctuations that can damage the electrical equipment. Check the coolant level on both the engine and heat exchanger coolant loops. Both should be at cold level. Confirm main 90 amp circuit breaker switch on the alternator is off before starting the integrated power station. Activate the engine display by pressing any button. Start the integrated power station. Verify voltages displayed are approximately 120 volts AC. The generator is available once the radiator and charge air cooler fans turn on. Turn the main 90 amp circuit breaker on the alternator to on. Turn on circuit breakers for the reactor 2 proportioner, the air dryer, and any auxiliary circuit breakers if applicable. The heat exchange coolant pump circuit breaker is locked in the on position. Check the software version of your Reactor 2. Turn the Reactor 2 main power switch to on.
enter the setup mode on the ADM using the lock button. Navigate to Advanced Screen 4. Verify that the software is at the newest revision level. If your software needs updating, turn Reactor 2 main power switch off. Remove the ADM from the bracket. Remove the token access panel. Firmly insert the software upgrade token into the ADM slot. Reinstall the ADM on the bracket. Turn Reactor 2 main power switch on. The screen will update the status of the software update. Do not remove the ADM or the token until the software update is complete. If software update fails, see manual for further instructions. After software update is complete, remove token from the ADM. If the M12 CAN connection between the Reactor 2 and Integrated Power Station is properly installed, the ADM will detect the Integrated Power Station during initial power on. Select Yes to connect to the Integrated Power Station and enable Integrated Mode. Your ADM will now reboot. Once Integrated Mode is activated, the ADM home screen will display the Reactor 2 model with an eye after it and will show the engine coolant temperature. Press the Unlock button to access setup screens. If your climate does not require full boost heat, reduce the amount of power sent to your Reactor 2 primary heaters. System software defaults all Reactor 2 systems to 4 kilowatts of heat. By reducing this to the minimum maintenance heat of 2 kilowatts, the available auxiliary power can be increased. If equipped with an air package, the air compressor on button is disabled for approximately 15 seconds after engine startup. Once started, the yellow low oil light may illuminate for up to 30 seconds and the red over temperature light may illuminate up to one second. Ensure needle valves on agitator and transfer pump air inlets are closed. Open main air supply valve on the air control panel. Adjust the air regulators to the desired pressure. Ensure the ball valves at the inlet strainers are closed. Apply air to transfer pumps by opening the air inlet needle valves and begin loading chemical into the system. When pressure has stalled transfer pump, look for leaks at all supply hose joints. Then open ball valve and allow transfer pump to push chemical through the reactor two and hose until primed. See the reactor two manual for instructions on how to use gun manifold to open or stall fluid supplied by transfer pumps.